All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the April Community of Practice meeting today. We're going to be going over business engagement um, and then possibly business engagement during COVID a little bit, if that is appropriate. I know um, during the last Community of Practice meeting, it seems like Fortunately, things are kind of starting getting back to normal or you guys have adopted practices that are going to be your new normal. So um, COVID might not be as big of an impact as it was when we were planning these things out. So we'll definitely go that direction if it makes sense to, but the, the main focus will be on business engagement this morning. Um, just a couple of other things. I know I sent an email out. Um, hopefully you guys got it since you all made it on here, but I am gonna try and streamline the way that um, I communicate all of the things about the community of practice meetings and the um, monthly trainings, and it's all gonna be on the DHS website. So um, I know a couple of you guys had emailed me with some questions and I just referred you to the website. Please just know that I'm trying to, to uh, encourage everybody to go to the website. So it wasn't that I didn't wanna provide those links, that I didn't wanna help, things like that. It was just that I wanna get everybody as used to going to that website as possible since that's where everything's gonna be housed moving forward. Um, I just thought that putting everything in one place was going to make it easier for everybody, including me, to keep track of. So um, hopefully that's working okay for everybody. But if not, please just let me know. I'm happy to explain anything or clarify anything if I need to. But um, other than that, um, just since I'm already talking, I'll, I'll do the uh, code word early this time. Um, this time it is spring, and I will go ahead and get the attendance sheet and the code word in the chat as well. But with that, I will turn it over to Russell. Thanks. Great. Um, well, thanks again, everybody, for, for coming back for the uh, community practice um, discussion. Um, and so I, I don't know that, I've, that we've had many slides in the last two. I think we had some in the intro. I just have a few slides. Um, and Jordan, am I able to? She's awesome. Um, to share. So it's just kind of a, a way to organize the conversation. I mean, we have an, an hour, if I'm not mistaken, together. And so um, I, um, during the last uh, training, what it seemed like is that a lot of things had gotten kind of, like Jordan said, maybe towards the, the new normal where maybe COVID wasn't as, as, um, as front and center in terms of making things extremely complicated. Maybe things are, are, are going to be Less complicated again. I, you know, it seems like something we'll probably be dealing with. Um, I don't, you know, who knows uh, forever <laughs> to some extent. But um, I know that, like in a lot of places in, in in South Dakota, it was like the issue. You know, it was like like whether or not we could do any work depended on people's opinions and then kind of where they were at with health and uh, of COVID. So that, I think it's it's still an issue, but it's. Um, but it's maybe a little bit back. Um, and so for example, um, I do, I, I, when I thought about last, the last time and today, I just um, kind of thought and COVID, you know, it's a business engagement uh, and COVID, you know, and I, and I think that, that um, I'd like to talk about it, but mainly I think in, in kind of, you know, wondering where you're at and also what, it, it, you know, how it's changed your work after, you know, obviously for the, it's made it harder, but, but for the better. Um, so for instance, like this morning, uh, and working in Michigan, and it's a little different than South Dakota, but um, but Michigan's still dealing with with COVID. Um, you know, it's I guess it's it got high again, like eight thousand cases. It's going back down today and yesterday. But um, but a, a person that I'm working with there uh, has two um, job development uh, meetings uh, scheduled, interviews, uh, informational interviews uh, with businesses, and they're both um, they're both done via uh, Teams or Zoom. Um, so the employment seekers on, um, the, the job developers on, and the business is on. And, uh, and so it raises a bunch of interesting, um, uh, you know, questions just about, about how, you know, how's the conversation go? Because they were actually in three different places. The employment seeker was at home, uh, the, the job developer was at, at her home because they're still working from home uh, for her business and the business at the business place. But um, with some interesting things like a, a flow of conversation, right? You know, if you've done those, if you ever did an informational interview or any kind of getting to know, even if you do traditional, like traditional interviewing where you're there supporting, there's kind of, you know, you can pick up cues and and, and, and add with experience get the flow, but that was kind of, you know, how would that work? You don't want to talk too much or talk too little. Um, but then the other one was like, one of the other things that you probably learned is that 
you know, especially if people aren't doing so much, there is just, you want to make sure that people are, um, are looking good, right? They're looking their best for the interview. You, you probably had the experience like I have where you kind of, that slips your mind, you show up and, and people just aren't dressed or they're grooming, you know, whatever, all of us. I mean, now I can keep my camera off if I want to, right? But, uh, but um, can't really do that. And so it was just like, hey, you know, you want to call him, uh, check in maybe an hour before just to see how it's going and what happens if he doesn't pick up his phone, you know, because <laughs> you're not gonna be able to pick him up and maybe real quickly uh, help him with that. So a lot of interesting. Um, um, so in certain ways, I think it's it's like, um, you know, COVID, I like to talk about as, as I think has, you know, that's kind of interesting and, and really more efficient, you know, that if the business owner can find time where they can not leave their business, but get in their office or whatever for 15, 20 minutes, which ended up uh, Kathy is the, the staff, you know, we, we asked for 15, 20 minutes, ends up being 45, you know, and, and she says, and she's learning, she says, you know, it's just been nice, you know, you're worried about, you know, do people want to talk, but once you get people going, you know, it's like, you know, it's really enjoyable, um, these, these interactions. Um, so anyway, um, so I would, I would like to talk a little bit about that, but today is, is I think, like all these, we'd really enjoy um, I wanted to, I, I, the, the reason for the COP, I think, is, is more for, like I said, us and me to get a sense of what's going on, you know, and, and, and kind of how are things currently being done. Uh, and then they inform some of the, of the training. So I know that um, the, the training topics, it switches starting in May, and it's four straight topics of job development concerns. Um, and then the COPs also kind of, you know, they have different topics, but they're all about, you know, the same thing or different approaches. And so I, I just think, um, um, you know, it's just really important to me to know kind of what's going on and, and, and where y'all are, are at. So I just have like five slides and, and really the, the one that we're spending the most time on is, is kind of the, the, the discussion point um, slide, which we talked a little bit about during the last um, training, but, uh, and then just some points of reference for how, um, nationally, it seems like employment staff are spending their time. And if you went through the customized employment training, these are slides I use there, but they're, they're relevant, not just for customized employment, they're relevant for us in general. I don't, I don't talk. And then, um, you know, some ideas on maybe some of the barriers and, and uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and share and then ask hopefully that for volunteers um, to tell us some stuff about what's happening now. So All right, so I hope it's okay. This is how I prefer to share the PowerPoint. So I can, if I do um, present presentation, it, it, I have a hard time seeing people's faces. So if it'll work, I like to share it like this. Let me know if it does and if it's too small. And I can, but um, so one, you know, question, you know, um, you know, business engagement, job development. Uh, I'm just curious how how that goes. Or what what is being done? I think that that's. Um, you know, we look at community integrated employment, um, you know, that's a big umbrella, right? And, and then if you're talking about IPS, um, support employment, uh, that has a, an approach, but it doesn't, I'm not, I'm not expert in that, but um, doesn't necessarily um, uh, prescribe a, a method of, of, um, of, of interaction, interacting or engaging with businesses. Uh, if you talk about support employment, you know, that's a, that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of methodologies, a lot of tools in there, obviously placement, um, same thing, and then um, customized employment, customized job development. Um, so I'm just curious, and, and again, I, I think in any one, one person's job description or organization, they're typically doing an amalgam, a combination of, of, uh, of approaches. Um, so I just wanted to ask that, to have that open, like what, you know, for job development, I can't recall, I don't think we had this exact conversation last time, but, um, I'm just curious, like, how is it done now? So if uh, a few of you would be willing to share um, business engagement, job development, how, what's, what's happening right now? And again, I mean, you talk about COVID, how it's changed it, how it maybe hasn't, or, or all, um, adaptations that you've, that you've uh, found. I prefer not to call on people. Uh, and I, you know, I'll just sit here in silence for, 50 minutes, joking, but uh, could, could some brave person uh, be the first person to, Kim? Hi. Hey. Hey, um, well, for me, I work with students in the high schools, um, finding them employment and, you know, 
as far as job developing goes, things really have not changed a whole lot here in South Dakota. Um, we have just, you know, it's kind of been business as normal. Um, a little more precaution and things like that, but students are still wanting to work and um, the types of jobs that we look at and stuff. Um, Cool. And They're then it was still oh. open and ready. Yeah. Okay. And so during, and, and you didn't see that change pretty much at all during the, because I know, for instance, like there's a, a bunch, like this is a bad example. And, and, you know, fast food is not <laughs> the only job for deep high school or teenagers. But um, like there's a places around me and in Michigan that they still haven't opened their lobby up again. You know, they're, they're still doing drive through only. That's one basic example of but that, hadn't, that didn't happen in, in Montana. Oh, oh yeah, we, we have, uh, you know, the, the fast food places, there's a lot of lobbies that are closed. Okay. Um, there are a lot that are open though also now. So, so yeah, but I haven't had any issues. Um, I've just, I've kind of been doing what I, I haven't changed a whole lot during. Okay. So, so then um, that's great. And I think, I, I mean, from what last, from last, uh, but you didn't see like during when COVID got bad, quote unquote, or whatever, it still didn't, you didn't see there were times when people were like, well, we have to wait a little bit or any, um, also from a perspective of your employment seeker students, they also were no families. And it's crazy. Um, parents and, uh, students, um, they continued to work. They continue to want to work. Um, Ooh, great. no, it was, it was kind of crazy at first, but yeah, they by you know by like um, May or or by like June they were just ready to go to work. So we did. Yeah. Cool. And then so you said so so let's get so forget about COVID. If you talk about business as usual, like what does that look like for you at the school? Right? Like what is business as usual um, oh. for helping people find jobs? Oh, or, so so what I do is. Um, I contract with the schools um, with the program through Voc Rehab and I just go in and meet with the students and see what they like to do to get them some job skills before they graduate. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like right, right now, going to the schools this year, of course, we all wear masks, uh -huh. um, that type of thing. And depending on the business that you're in, um, a lot of the kids are used to wearing masks and it doesn't bother them. They seem, it just, you know, they adjust so well. Mm -hmm. They did. Um, um, so we just treat it as a normal thing right now. And, okay. and they haven't, don't have any issues. Cool. So then you'll go into the school and you'll, you'll, you'll be referred a student, right? Like you're referred an individual, right. not like a group, a classroom or anything like that. Um, and then, so right. you'll, you'll go and you'll talk to them. Um, and what, what kind of just, if you wouldn't mind, I'm sorry to ask specifics, like just like what kind of conversation points are you, are you using to get that information to d decide like what kind of experiences they would like. Does that make sense? You know, we, we really talk and focus on, on the students' interests um, mm -hmm. and think that they would like to do and what they want to learn and, mm -hmm. and um, just if they have any, any thoughts of what they're going to do after school. Um, so we know, you know, maybe we want to get into a setting where they can learn to get prepared for or whatever they're they're wanting to do when they graduate um mm -hmm. and then we do a lot of uh you know we we always have an interview i always just call it an informal interview um because depending on the employer um it's usually pretty informal but huh? but it is an interview and the kids are prepared and 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 ready and so they kind of know about that before they go out and do their own stuff. Okay, so. so you'll talk to them. Do do most of the students have work experience? Like, how do they? That, that my question is always like, how do you know what you want to do if you've right. not done much? Like, do you find that people are exactly. coming with? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the students that I work with, they don't have any work experience. Um, so that's where we talk about just what they like to do, okay. and where do you think it would be a fun place to work. Um, because I want them to enjoy what they're doing. And then we just kind of build off of that. Yeah, cool. Uh, and I think at that age too, I mean, that's just kind of, 
What, what are the ages typically? Um, uh, 16 to 21. Okay. Um, the students that I work with. Okay. And so then um, you'll find like a path or you'll identify, like would they tell you like, I want to work at this business. And then what you'll do is you'll go out and make a contact with that business or? Yeah, I mean, there are times when, but most most of the time the students have no idea. Okay. Um, so we really um, just kind of, Kind of brainstorm and and come up with different ideas and and yeah and then each year if they're in it for more than a year then we we just continue to build on those experiences and and they're kind of prepared after they they graduate and kind of know what they can do and what they're capable of and and yeah so cool and then you're setting up uh, like work experiences at these businesses um yes are they, we do are job they, shadow. Job shadow. Okay. Are they on the payroll of the business, or do they get paid, or? No, they they, they actually get paid through Voc Rehab. Um, okay. Yeah. So the students they can pay. So they are, you know, after they're trained and everything, they are they are um, expected to to be able to do the job that they're trained at and to be able to work independently. Um, cool. Otherwise, we um, usually just try to find something else. If, if it just wasn't a good fit sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then um, and we'll move on. Sorry, I'm not, I won't pick on you for too much longer, but they, um, so is it like for a time limited period? I, we talked about that before, how many hours people could get paid. I can't recall it, but it's like for a semester or for a year. And then oh, there's, a, right. there's a time period so, where it'll end and then you, mm -hmm. you'll do something else this next year, year. Yeah, this program is, it's throughout the school year. So it usually typically starts when school starts and it goes throughout the summer until the next school starts. Okay. And they have a total of 250 hours. Um, they work, you know, they can work up to 20 hours a week or they have to work at least 10. Um, but, but yeah, so. Cool. So Does some kids prefer to work in the happens? summer. Yeah. Does it ever happen that like, it's a nice match and then the business is like, well, I'd like to hire you. Oh, all um, the time. Cool. Yeah. And so do they do that while they're in school? Like they'll do an after school job or a weekend job or a summer job? All that. Awesome. Th they do. They do all of it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Nice. And typically, what, what do you think the average number of experiences people have by the time they're through, like they're <sighs> done with that, different places, just roughly? Well, you know, um, typically the student, um, the job that they choose when I meet with them during the year, they typically, they, they usually stay at that job throughout the year. Okay. Um, sometimes we do a couple during the same year. So they probably probably get uh, maybe two, three or so experiences okay. or different. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thanks, Kim. You bet. Cool. Um, so, so that's interesting. I mean, that's cool. I mean, I think for, for working age people, I think, you know, people who don't have tons of, or I'm sorry, school age people who don't have tons of uh, experience. I mean, that's, you know, we probably, you can think of yourself when you were 16 to 21, how many different jobs you had, you know, when you're trying to figure that out. So that's pretty typical. Cool. How about um, a couple of people who are working with like uh, people out or like adult, I guess, not in post-secondary or secondary education. How, how is, uh, I'd like to think, um, Kendra, your comment's really good. I'd like to Talk about that, but could you describe how job develop, job development may go? Older, like older. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> Just yeah. How do what what do you do for job? Like, what are the varied strategies you're doing for adults uh, during job development? Like, what are the different approaches specifically? Like the tools you use, you know? <laughs> well, right now I'm kind of winging everything because. Uh -huh. um, I, this department used to be for staff and it's currently just me. Ooh, and yeah. so I work with um, adults who have mental health diagnosis. And then I also work with um, adults that have developmental disabilities. So I'm in a couple different settings. And so it really just kind of varies on which population I'm working with. Okay. Um, Cause with some of the individuals, I'm not too involved with the, with the finding the jobs and stuff, I'm more of doing the follow along after they've received the job. So it just kind how, of- How do they get the jobs? A lot of them, they're doing it on their own. Okay. Um, actually, a lot of the folks that I'm supporting right now have found jobs on their own and then contacted Voc Rehab or myself to um, have a case open so that I could provide that follow along service. Oh. 
Um, otherwise, they do come in and they have what we call workshop time where they're um, getting on the computer and looking for jobs and I'm helping them apply and stuff like that. Okay. So people are using applications, resumes, that kind yep. of stuff yep. online, and then they'll get called for an interview. Um, yep. That's an interesting, uh, Jordan, that's an interesting, um, uh, typically, like, VRs really struggle with that, I think, of somebody saying, I got a job, I need help. Um, because, um, and again, not, again, smaller, but just like, because part of the concern is like, is it a, how do we know it's a good match, you know, and the, the work goal and that kind of stuff. Um, that's interesting. It, it, um, they, they, so people are having a job, then they're calling VR, you have a connection with them somehow. Or maybe, maybe sometimes you're getting called by, from a counselor saying, hey, there's this new person you don't know yet. And can you help them? That actually has been the case with seven of my current clients. Okay. I got the call from VR saying, hey, we yeah, work yeah, with this person. Yeah, cool. um, but otherwise, I have a specific um, VR counselor that's assigned to Southeastern. Okay. Um, and so we just kind of have daily communication. Uh, but like I had somebody in here yesterday who's never done fast food or food, and she got a job at Denny's, and she contacted me saying she's never done this kind of work, and she wanted uh -huh. support in the job to make sure she could be successful. Mm -hmm. um, so we had the meeting with VR yesterday to get her case open so that I could just provide those supports in helping her with that job. So you actually like be on the job with her and stuff like that? Um, no, not with her. Okay. Because um, she's serving at a pretty fast paced place. And yeah, I think I would just kind of be in the way. But you know, she's got some some medical stuff and she's also got some mental health. And so being able to ask the employer for those accommodations. Um, and stuff like that. And then just kind of helping her problem solve when some of those issues do come up. So more of on the sidelines type of thing. Cool. So her concern wasn't necessarily with learning the tasks of the job. It's kind of peripheral stuff of like, uh, if she's stressed or if, if conflict comes up or she needs to ask for something. Right. Um, yep. Yeah. Or problem solving, brainstorming, having a, having a, somebody in the, mm -hmm. on her side. Cool. Okay. Um, so what about folks that, that aren't finding their own jobs? Um, how, how do y'all do that? How do you support people with that? Like if people aren't going to be able to go out or, or they're doing it and they're not successful on their own, how, what do you do then? I'm currently meeting with people one-on-one -on -one and, and assisting with that. Um, like I just came from a different building that I work at where I was meeting with um, the folks where we were getting on the computer and just kind of seeing what was out there. Or I'd have some job leads already pulled for them that we would discuss to see if they felt like it was a good match. Um, but those are the clients that I'm struggling with because they don't have any work experience and they had situational set up pre COVID and then they got canceled because of COVID and I were a year later and I still can't get stuff set up for them. And I don't really know what skills they have um, and they don't really know what they would enjoy doing. And so we had had stuff set up at like the Walgreens and one of the local restaurants here to do dishwashing and serving and that kind of stuff. And so that's the biggest struggle I'm facing right now is getting those situational set up because the employers just don't want extra bodies in there okay. right now. So, and, and we're assuming that's an impact of COVID. It, yeah. And they'll, they'll probably tell you that. Um, yeah. So is anybody else? So that is an impact of COVID is maybe, and that makes sense, right? Is that like extra people, like you said, mm -hmm. <laughs> that complication of, of um, um, has anybody, has anybody else had that, that, I know that, um, it looks like Caleb, you've had, could you share, you said one since, like, compared to prior to COVID and after, if you wouldn't mind, Caleb? Yeah, so uh, since the beginning of January, I've only had one, one situational, um, you know, and I just go in there and simply just have that conversation with employers, like, hey, would you be willing, you know, um, generally, I do it uh, during an interview and like, hey, you know, we want to ensure that this person is going to be successful within this within the company. Um, and it's just going to be that good match. Hey, would you be willing or interested in doing a job shadow? Um, I prefer to use the word job shadow because a lot of times if I use the word situational, it really confuses employers. Um, and then I have to try to backtrack and like, oh, Oh, you're not going to be liable. Um, you know, the person is uh, covered under, you know, voc rehab insurance policy, and then they're just really thrown back. Um, yeah. And more so comes with those more, um, we'll say, corporate organizations where they're like, oh, we, we have to discuss this with corporate um, before we would even allow this um, versus the like um, the mom and pa shops, the more locally owned. 
they're more, I would say, open to it, obviously pre-COVID. Um, but yeah, it uh, definitely has been a struggle and even more so, I mean, it started before COVID, but yeah, I would say it um, has, you know, significantly um, gotten worse. Okay. And when you say job shadow, um, or say people are doing stuff, right? They're not just, like when I think of shadow, you're, just, you're not really doing much, you're just, you're watching. Yep, you're, yep. you're asking, you want people to do things. Yep, it's a hands-on. I always yeah. say like, hands you know, yep. uh, come on, can we come in for, you know, um, at least two to three hours for, uh, you know, to, uh, yeah. you know, be hands-on um, for even just one day, you know, prefer, preferably, you know, maybe a few days to really get a good feel for that position. Yeah, okay, cool. And all, when you're doing that, the situationals of the shadow, it's, the idea is you're trying to get more information to inform job development. Correct. You're not using it as a as a work tryout at that specific place. Well, I mean, a little bit of both, I would say. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, Sometimes they turn into, it's not, a, I mean, you're not intending, okay, I'm sorry, I don't mean to step on you. Yeah, what were you saying? Go ahead, Caleb. Oh, um, <clears throat> it's off. a little bit of both. You know, I would say that, you know, there's a lot of times that that person is, you know, um, successful, um, you know, with that hands-on job tryout. Um, it can lead to a, a job offer right away. And do you say that to the business when you're setting it up? That it's possible it could lead, or is that something that's unstated and you just assume that they'll understand that if somebody looks, if somebody's kicking butt, you know, that they'll. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Like uh, the, the one and only uh, job tryout that I had, or yeah, situational um, here within the past three weeks, um, it was one of those unspoken, like, yep, you know, this person doesn't have experience. Um, <laughs> you know, doing busing, um, he has a little bit of experience in the kitchen industry, but not specifically busing. Um, and it was like, absolutely, yep, let's get him in here. Let's try the job out. Um, and, you know, if all goes well, then we will we will move forward. Okay. You say that ahead of time, depending on the person, because he had some experience in that environment. So you could kind of say, this is a unique task or a new thing. Like we, we're pretty certain that some things will work, but we're not sure about these other things. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. And it's generally a conversation that I even have, you know, with 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 that person, that person supported, you know, while we're in that, you know, having that interview and that discussion, you know, so they're also involved, like, and what do you think, you know? Yep. Cool. Okay. So it sounds like, I, um, uh, and Kendra, could you explain like before COVID, like, so situationals were not, like, they were relatively, um, I wouldn't say easy, nothing's ever easy, but but just the pushback was less, and, and uh, the fear, you know, that, that concern wasn't there, so it was more straightforward. Well, I had my four go-to places where I had really good relationships with the managers there, and all I had to do was email them and be like, hey, I have so-and-so, can we come in someday next week, and it just always happened, and so... Yeah. Um, you know, those relationships aren't even necessarily there anymore because managers have changed since COVID. Um, so I don't even know after COVID if those relationships would still be intact or not. Um, but I mean, I've had some, I'm, Sam's Club, for example, one time thought I was trying to bribe them when I called to ask about a situational and ESP. Um, so I, I agree with Caleb. You were you were saying that like free, free labor? Like, yeah, they, yeah, they're like, yeah, we, we can't have you pay their wage. And I'm like, no, that's not what yeah. I'm talking about. So I agree with Caleb that sometimes it is kind of confusing if you're using the terminology like situational and stuff like that. Um, but it, I, I wouldn't say it was difficult to set up situationals before COVID, um, but it, it definitely wasn't the easiest though either. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Kendra, you had posted, um, never applied first and asked about the situation. Caleb so. had mentioned that he applies for the job first and then during like the interview process mentioned doing the shadowing. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's just one way that I had never gone about it because I always wanted to see if it was a good match first before even taking the time to apply. So cool. maybe if it's something that I feel would be a good fit, that would be a different way to try to go about it to see if I would have better luck, I guess. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, great. So we have um, so stuff that's stuff that's happening and seems like it's working and not working is uh, in the school setting. Um, the if you're you you have the kind of the 
I like to think of it as kind of a, a print, not apprenticeship, but you know, you get work experience in school. It's my, my daughter has to get a hundred hours of community, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's kind of, I mean, people, you know, young adults are learning and that, that, and I think in general, the community gets that, right? They want to help. Um, and then, so you're able to help students try out different places. And then uh, the, the experiential, you know, people see it, right? And so, and then that can lead to jobs um, after school, summer, that, which is awesome. It's so great that, that students are working real, you know, are actually on payroll while they're in school. That's so important. Um, and then the other, another approach is people are getting their own jobs, you know, they, they seem to be working and then asking you to kind of, one worry I would have is, is, do you know, are people getting jobs and not able to, that'd be my one worry would be, that's pretty haphazard, you know, again, um, and you can't tell people what to do, but I would worry that some people are doing it like that are then calling and they're not able to coordinate the supports in time. Does that ever happen, Kendra? Or, I mean, so a lot of the folks that are doing that um, are already Southeastern clients. So okay. they already have like a rapport with either a case manager over there or um, they've had conversations with me in passing. And so they kind of already know a little bit about voc rehab and, and what Employment Connection does. Um, okay. So it's not like it's just random people off the street coming in. Oh, okay. it's, cool. it's Southeastern yeah. clients that are kind of doing it that okay. way. Okay, cool. Um, and Jordan, what would you call that when, when there's a, what, what stat, I mean, what is the service or what's the, I know not status, but like when, when there is a job, an employment seeker who's like, I'm going to do my own uh, job search and I may need some help. What, what, what is that called like officially in the VR system? There, in, does that make sense? Like you're not getting placement services or any kind of job development services, but the job coaching may, or whatever you want to call it, may need to be available. What, what, does, what do you call that? Um, I don't know if this is formally what it's called. I think it's frequently re like referred to as like job support services. So there's like job placement services, which is, is the services that, you know, you're working on interview prep, you're doing applications, you're, you're doing job development, those things is like job placement. And then job support services is anything that happens after employment that helps um, maintain the job, whether it be coordination with the employer, whether it's job coaching, whether it's follow along, you know, then that's, it's pretty individualized based on what that person needs. But yeah. Um, and that's, that's just placement and support right there. Yep. And one of the, one of the clear differences is people are doing their own job development. Um, Oh, okay. Um, do you do you help people, Kendra or anybody else? Do you ever help people who are doing that on their? Uh, well, you said you were helping people on, online and stuff. Um, but you 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 wouldn't do, be doing placement, but you're helping them maybe um, follow up, like reminding them or have a schedule of following up after the interview or following up after, and they um, they put they uh, put in an application. Like, are those anybody offering those services where you're just kind of maybe helping people craft a narrative or craft an introduction, but you're not doing it. People do that too. Does that make sense, Kendra? Like, um, uh, like for instance, like my wife is applying for a new job and we had a conversation about it's the appropriate time to wait to, follow. you know, it's like, you know, like when you're dating somebody, it's like, you have a cool day. You don't want to call them right away because they'll think that you're, you know, like, and you don't want to wait too long, you know? So there's a, Stuff like that, you know, like, do you ever do so that? Some of that stuff I do, but then we don't really have voc rehabs involvement then. Okay. It's yeah. more of, I, I bill on our end for Southeastern than our, our contact billing. Um, so I do some of that, but then they're not open with voc rehab for any kind of service. It's just, I'm providing some of that um, support and knowledge, I guess, with how to follow up after the interview, after the yeah. application, that kind of stuff. Okay. Cool. And then the other thing that's working is situational. That seems like a tool that a few people have said is, is a good tool to get information, both for like, you know, predicting a, a or predicting, but for selecting a, a work goal, but then also perhaps uh, for getting uh, knowledge. I like to just think of it as, as help, helping make the person, the employment seeker be better known by the business in terms of what they have to offer. Um, cool. And the situational is both working and not working, you know, kind of depending on COVID. Um, what about like, um, if like you were saying, um, I, I guess about one thing I want to ask for the situationals, is it pretty, is it typical that you have like places that you typically go for situationals or is it, and I'd like to ask somebody else to answer because I've, um, Kendra and Kayla have talked a lot of it. Um, when I do a situ situational, it's kind of in the beginning when I'm talking to the client, 
I ask them what they love to do. I start there. Not where do you want to work? I, I ask them what some of their hobbies are and what they love to do. And then I try and think of jobs or places that offer some of those. Like if somebody is an avid reader, I'm going to think the library or, or if they say they like games, I'm going to think of a gaming shop or a um, toy store or something like that. And then I'll kind of tweak it around to make it fit because then you kind of have the clients buy in a little bit more too, because I've asked what they like, not like, here's what you got. <laughs> this is all you have to apply for. And then I, I try to weave it into that. But I also like, I like that we can do the follow along in coaching because I think that is instrumental in getting us into the businesses or new businesses because we can say, you're not, you're not just getting this employee, you're getting me to make sure to follow along, to coach them on the correct things to do. So that's an added bonus. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and then you'll, you'll like that tool. So um, in terms of how you engage businesses or what, you're, what else are, are folks doing um, or people doing in, in terms of reaching out to businesses? So, and also we've heard about um, looking online, obviously using probably what's, what's uh, Indeed now or whatever local there is to find out who's hiring. Uh, and doing applications, that, that kind of stuff. Um, you're approaching businesses, um, like using a situational as, as a potential tool to help people become known after you know the person or even at the beginning of the process. Um, so Brenda, if, you, if you're doing a situational early, what would be the, what would are some of the tools you use during job development? Um, then we come back, well, if we're doing the situational, usually we're not at that point where we've applied yet. So mm -hmm. we can tweak the resume to fit the job that they're actually going to do a little bit better. Okay. You know, we can, I can craft it mm -hmm. and the verbiage in it might be a little bit closer to what the job will entail. Uh -huh. But when you said, how are you meeting? I'm asking all the time. I'm in the line at places where I think my clients might fit in and I'll say, gosh, you guys have any part-time openings right now? Mm -hmm. They might say, why? And I said, well, have you ever heard of Volk Rehab and the services that are offered? And I always push that they get me with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the employee they're getting and to help them transition. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have employer, a couple employers now calling me saying, do you have anybody? Do you have anybody? Mm -hmm. So that, that's a good feel. Okay, cool. So you're prospecting kind of always. That's, oh, yeah, that's, that's always. The, job, the job developer life. You can't really turn that off. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm marketing. Yeah. Everything I, everything okay. I do is marketing. I, okay. whether it's for one program or the other that I work with. Yeah. And I can't that, shut it off. And do you have do you have a person in mind when you're when you do that? Or I do, I do. And sometimes the first try, the employ the candidate might not think it's a good idea, but then maybe one of their friends gets in there and gets a job and says, "Oh my gosh, this is a great place to work." Yeah. You know, ha has she asked you about it? And they say, "Yeah, she's told me about there, but I really didn't think I liked that." Yeah. Well, did you know that I get like $60 a week at least for tips? Yeah. Bagging groceries. So, you know, maybe it's a, a good thing then. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Brenda. Um, can somebody share? So Brenda also uh, mentioned um, another, I think, tool that we can use, which is um, successes, right? Um, can somebody talk about, and Brenda, you kind of mentioned that, but could somebody else also share like how you, you use that, you know, like um, previous successes as, as a tool? And I think there's many ways to do that. Um, as a tool for, for job development or if, are you doing that? Does that make sense? Want me to clarify? Give somebody else a chance before I go back to Brenda. But uh, does that make sense? Like, um, I'm guessing that if you do a good job, 
you know, and our job is, is we're the broker essentially, right? Ultimately, we don't do the work. I mean, we can help with training, supports, that kind of stuff, but we don't we don't create the job. Uh, we don't we don't own the business, but we're brokering ultimately, like we're facilitating. If you do a good job at that, um, I wouldn't be surprised if if businesses or family members or others say, "Hey, I know somebody," you know, or the business says, "Hey, like you said, like here's a you know, can we can we do this again again?" Hopefully, it's yeah. Sorry. Any, anybody share that? I do have two employers that they always send me emails when they have um, hirings, just because one of the places I currently have three people at and the other one I have two people at. And they, okay. um, the one has been at her job for six years. And mm -hmm. so it's been really, it's been a great working relationship. And so anytime they have an opening, um, I get an email saying, hey, this is what yeah. we're looking for. Do you have anybody? So um, I do have two contacts and I, that's, I love that. It's amazing. I wish I could make more, but yeah, cool. And, and, and any ideas on how, I mean, it, um, I mean, I, I do think there's a lot of timing and luck in it, of course, but, but like, how, how could you like, I, and this, that's what this is for. This is not, this is a training stuff for that, but um, I, I really think that that that's something again, business engagement. I just think that that's something that um, do, do, Kendra, do you, do you always, do you guys um, market your, success do you, do you tell those stories you know what i mean in any way that um i know they know that story right but like part of it is like how how can you get business over here to know that story like um like i i think it may be and again not it's not the intent for today but like would that business person be willing to like speak on your behalf if you were like if you were talking with another business and they're like ah oh, this is i don't know you know and then i you know just say like i know it sounds a little different and, and, you know, it's worked over here and there's a business, a manager, an owner who really, you know, we've been able to, it, it just it worked great. You know, and it may be sound weird to you or different or whatever, but maybe if you talk to them, you know, they would, they could, cause they'll trust another business owner or, or right. a business person way more than they'll trust us typically. I just, I just think, have you do any, do any of that? I'm not criticizing her. I just think they could be a really cool tool. I've never even thought of doing anything like that. Um, uh, but yeah, that I'm, cause the, my, my, one of my best job development when I was doing things a bit more, um, I just, I remember I, I got this one business, small business, we got like 10 jobs out of, and it wasn't at that business. We got two at that business. And then that business owner talked to their, their, their business owner friends, you know? And, and so it was like, it was, they had credibility, you know, that I didn't, you know? And, and so I, and I, they lived in a community that I didn't live in. So I couldn't, um, and, and um, then, then you have the dilemma of, you don't want to just throw anybody at the job, obviously, because it, it, you know, it's not gonna be good for you ultimately if the business isn't happy, if it doesn't work out, it's not gonna be good for anybody. So you have that, that kind of dilemma of, of when you, well, there's nine job openings, we, you know, we just don't want, you know, we wanna make sure they work. Um, I, I, I just think that that would be, and then somehow intentionally, part of the training we'll be doing is, is you know, how do you leverage your relation, your successes and your relationships to do a lot of the work for you, you know? And I don't mean that in, I, the joke I use is like, it's not like you're being lazy. It's just like, you're using a more effective tool, you know, uh, somebody who can maybe get you in places or. Some, not, not to hog, but something that our group, like our VR group that is the, and Kayla will attest to this, the, the counselors, the coaches, the um, people in VR, we're gonna do some, short little videos with employers, like a kind of a dog and pony show. Whitney and I are gonna take, um, go out to some of the employers um, and just ask them questions. Yeah. Why, why do you like using the services? Or, and especially to the ones that have gotten awards in the area, you know, just to kind of bring that up. And then I think, I'm not sure where we'll have it playing, if that'll be on Facebook or wherever, but we just talked about that. And I said, you know, unless we tell, we're people in the community, unless we tell the community why it's successful and why you should use it, they're probably not gonna know. They're gonna just say, and don't get mad at me, this is another state service. I don't think I can use it. I don't think I'll qualify, but they do, they're an employer. Yeah. So, you well, know, they're, just, they're yeah, sorry. Yeah, it, I, it's a win-win. And if yeah. one person sees it, one employer sees, it, sees another employer that used it, they may call that employer and say, hey, yeah. what's this all about? 
Yep. Well, one of the lines I love to use, and I may have already told this to you, I say it all the time, is, is like, do you pay taxes? <laughs> you know, business. Uh, you're, you're, you know, this is you're paying for it. And, uh, and again, that that's a sore subject with a lot of people. So you have to find a, a gentle way to do it. But it's I like the one line that I learned a long time ago was it's a way to reinvest your tax dollars into your business. You know, I, I just think that that's true. That's wholly true. Like you know, I think um, a, a way to like look at it from a positive perspective. You know that these services are, are um, you know, they grow the economy, right? By helping people access it, helping businesses businesses find strong workers um, or good workers, and, and help businesses be stronger businesses. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fun to play around with with that and try to figure out those those stories are crucial um, in getting the word out because um, I, I do think it's generally true. I mean, we had a in Florida, I had a conversation with a business where I had to I had to walk through like this is what VR is, <laughs> you know, you know, like they don't know what it is because I mean it's it's a bit of a niche thing and it started and I, I may get this wrong, Jordan, but pretty sure the original rehab was um, they called it something else was it was for veterans coming back from World War One, you know, who, who had injuries and then it turned into other stuff and more and expanded, you know, its mission um, and just to walk through that a little bit, you know, of like hey, you know, this is something that we've had it's over a hundred years, you know. Um, and uh, so, um, but yeah, um, cool. And anything else? I know we're kind of running out of time. Um, I did want to, yeah, thank you. It's 1970 soldiers, yeah. Looking, Bernie, can you find, what was what was rehab originally called? I, I saw that, I looked it up the other day. I can't keep that in my head. I don't, I don't, I know it was Rehab and Services Administration. It was something else. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was called back okay. then, but it was the Soldiers cool. Act and awesome. it started, but, um, 68 is when the current Rehabilitation Act, I think. It's, okay. You know, yeah. they'll refer oh. to Rehab Act of 68. Yeah. So it's a, okay. yeah. I mean, I'm, I, so, I'm, people, I'm sorry, that's 73. Okay. 73, yeah, 73 is where. Yeah. So people really dig that. I mean, I don't know. It's been, a, these conversations are, are fun to have, but um, what else is working for, for people right now? So, and the other thing too about about the um, the uh, situationals, I wonder too if that may be, a fa if, you, if you have businesses that it's worked for, Again, COVID's a new concern, and you know if you're able to figure it out in one business, perhaps there are some some pieces to take away, you know, that could help. Or to have 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 that if that if you have a relation, good relationship with the business you, you've had one that one work for, would they be willing uh, to to you know talk to somebody for five minutes? Um, so, and the same thing you know, if you call Sam's Club. I know that's corporate, but it's just it'd be so nice to be like, ah, I know that sounds kind of weird, but here's a business we did it with, and maybe you could talk to them and they could explain how from their perspective. What else is 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 working? If that would be any other, has anybody helped people get jobs where they they're not doing applications and they're not doing um, resumes? And could, could you describe that if you're you're using any other different approaches? If you have COVID screener positions, right? Yeah. <laughs> See whole whole other economy. That's the with the DoorDash and stuff. That's what they're they're saying that all these jobs got created and maybe they'll go away someday. Um, nobody ever I do a job where they're not doing not using resumes or applications or like um, was somebody gonna talk? Or, we will. <laughs> I hate to be, we, um, I've only used a resume twice. Okay. And nobody has, oh, one has had to fill out an application. Okay. But I've also done the situationals with those folks okay. um, that haven't had to do it. So if they have to fill out the, um, uh, an application, it's because of a company policy. Right, it's like a, it's a formality that yeah. you gotta do. Okay, yeah. cool. So the situational is taking the, like if you think of what a resume is, right? We talk about this is it's just information, right? It's information in a format that, that the businesses want because it's easy for them to go through it quickly. You know, it's for HR. And so what you're doing is you're essentially substituting or you have an alternative, you're circumventing the resume and you're providing an alternative format, format for them to get the same information. And I'd say better information, right? Than obviously what would be on a resume for people, if, especially if they're, they're struggling with work. So you've you've essentially translated um, uh, the same information, but and I think a more effective format, obviously, if, if people are getting jobs and not needing that. Cool. Um, 
cool. You ever had a business say like, why are we doing resumes then to you? <laughs> like, like, this is pretty cool. Maybe we can, I, those are fun conversations they have with businesses. Um, anybody else? No, but I just had another thought. This yeah. would be for Jordan <laughs> because it says ideas for change. Yeah. How about maybe if we have some videos that turn out okay, little short snippets, is there any way for the state to utilize those to advertise? Because everybody's looking for employees, right? Everybody. Yeah. So is there a way for the state to get some of those little snippets out there? It would certainly be good for lots of different purposes. Yes. Whether it's videos, whether it's just a description of like successful cases that you guys have, um, definitely if you have those, forward them to your counselors. We love to have them. We would, and it, you know, it's been utilized in different ways and we, we've used those kinds of things in different ways in the past. But if you guys have a really good example of, I and mean, we, we refer to them as success stories, but you know, a, a successful case, a person who was really successful in their employment, things like that, we would love to hear that story and how that worked out for them, how it worked out for you guys, how it worked out for the business. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't like to say advertising because that feels kind of weird, but it's, it, it is a little bit like advertising, a way to say like, hey, here's what our services can do. Here's how they can be helpful. And, and then here's an example of, of how this worked out well for somebody. So yeah, I mean, like kind of like, a response to say yes. Kind of a, did you know? Yes. Yeah. South Dakota, did you know yeah. we could do this? Yeah, I think it's exactly what you're like. I think it's marketing I, and marketing in the sense of you're, you're sharing information. You're not telling people necessarily what to do with it. Um, that's that's where like the individual, that's where we come in, you know, but you're, you're letting people know, hey, this is out here. You know, if you're interested or you can do a lot of things with that. So awesome. The last question before we move on. It, um, and does anybody else want to share? I guess we have about eight minutes left. Um, I mean, one of the things that's happening, interestingly, and, and I was on a call with Michigan VR just before this is, and you see, I'm reading about this, I'm still a little skeptical because I don't quite understand it, but um, she's saying that businesses are like having to reduce hours and even close because they can't find workers, which is interesting to me. Because um, I always thought in economic theory, there was something that's supposed to happen when you can't find workers. <laughs> it was supposed to help you find workers, which is they're supposed to be raising wages, right? Yeah, I mean, economic, they, you can't not find workers, you just got to increased wage, but maybe it doesn't work. But um, is that, is that, um, do you find, I mean, are, if you have that kind of level of demand, is that how it is in, in where you're at too? Where it's just, that is the, cool. Yeah. I've had some employers hire people with absolutely no experience just because they need bodies in uh -huh. their business basically. Um, mm. And it's turned out that they shouldn't have been hired because they weren't qualified for that job at all, but oh. the employer just really needed people in there to be able to keep their business open. Yeah. Um, and so that's been kind of different. Yeah. Did it work? Did it end up working out? Or? Um, for one person, she's still yeah. working. We're still seeing how this is going to go. Um, okay. For a couple others, it, it wasn't good. Okay. And they don't feel like, like manufacturing, um, Brenda, like they're not able to train the people to get them to skills up to where they need to be. Like some, I mean, obviously you can't train somebody to be a, um, I don't know, uh, to, to be a neurosurgeon um, immediately, but um, they weren't able to train the person or was that, they just were like, you gotta be here and they weren't worried about that part. <laughs> or, no, they can't, there's no people to hire. No people to hire. Yeah. But I, mean, but I mean, once they have the person there, can they train, they train. Can, they get, can they get people up to, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Um, well, that's an interesting, probably, I mean, it's like, you know, an interesting time. I mean, for obviously like could be an awesome, we were saying just a really great opportunity for people who have the reason we're serving, they're traditionally excluded from the labor market. Um, so th those are, that's really interesting. Um, anybody else want to share? Um, so like, like Caleb, um, if they're saying no situational, is there another way to get that information? And then if they really want workers like you could help the person job develop you know what i mean like go right to job development you wouldn't want to do that without knowing the person but would there be another way to get that information that especially if there's such a, a demand for workers these days i mean i've never really thought about it <clears throat> pardon me 
you know, I going back to situationals, I used to kind of do like Brenda was saying, um, just jump right into those situationals. That's how yeah. I was taught in this department. You that was your that was a working interview, yeah. you know, and there was no applications to fill out. You did not have to have any resumes. Well, nowadays, though, you throw that word situational, people get all confused. Yeah. Um, and so I just jump into or I figure out, OK, ask that person, hey, you know, um, does this job uh, sound uh, any interest or have any interest for this job? Um, whether they uh, have any skills in that, you know, particular position. Yeah, you know what? That sounds kind of fun or interesting. OK, I apply for it. Nowadays, though, you also have to have a resume if you're using Indeed and whatnot. Um, and then once we land that interview and uh, kind of uh, feel, feel, get a feel for it, and that person still thinks, yeah, this, is, this could be interesting. And that's when I like, hey, you know, this person really has never, um, never done this type of job, um, doesn't really have the skills. Would you be interested in doing like a working interview? And then kind of feel them out from there. That's the only thing that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think there. So, like, if you can think of an alternative to getting that. So the problem is, is if you're you, if you're taking a leap, you know, of knowledge about the person, which is the, which the situational the shadowing fills in information about what works and what doesn't. If there's an alternative way for you to feel secure or good about that, I don't know what that is, but. Um, we can go right to the job development piece, skipping the, you know, that part of it. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like um, where instead of asking, instead of the situation, you're, you're maybe finding a way to go. The target is the, the job. Um, and then, um, and then, and then supporting the person around that, but you'd have to, you know, you'd have to have a reason to think that, that there's a match here, you know, in the job and then have a reason to think that the person's where they're at right now or can learn, relatively within the confines of the job can have the skills and tasks and conditions and you have to, you know, instead of it just being like a, a random, you know, thing. So, okay. Um, cool. Um, and the, and the other slides I'll, we'll look at next during the training. Um, anything else that people want to add? One, one thing I'd like to talk to, okay, see you, Missy. Um, just asking about um, like, if you're doing anything, I, I may have mentioned this last time, uh, of like pulling like business, like um, organizational business engagement. Like if there's any way, uh, we used to, we call it, um, um, you know, there, there used to be business business advisory councils or the SELN, I think is what they call it now, the leadership networks, support employment leadership networks. Um, but to have just kind of maybe an intentional structure where either your organization uh, is hosting um, or, or a business itself could be hosting uh, other businesses um, to assist with that connection. So like, I may, again, I'm sorry, I've had so many these webinars, I can't remember what I've said before, but um, like Rotary Clubs are often really good for that, you know, as, as a place, they're service oriented, they're business oriented, as a place to start to get other organizations to help you. So you're not a stranger when you're presenting options uh, to businesses, you know, to, to open the doors for you. Um, or to help you. One of the things that we worry too is like we also like let's say you work with somebody and and they don't none of your existing relationships fit that person, you know. So now you've got to create a new one. Um, you know that's not super easy all the time. And so having other people um, help you with that. Is anybody doing anything like that? And again, I apologize if I've asked that. Where you're having like a group of business people come together or. Your, your organization has a um, business advisory council or anything like that. Do we already talk about that? Um, I, I think that can go a long way towards what, what Jordan and Brenda, you were talking about. It's a nice vehicle to get stories out as well. And, and a nice um, audience for that kind of stuff, you know, where, where you can, um, in, in a number of different states um, and then Canada too, they've, they've, they've designed employment initiatives they are centered around like Rotary or Lions Club or churches. Church is another big one um, where they actually like the church itself would be the center of the social capital, the relationships um, for a certain number of individuals. And so when you're, if you're bumping into any kind of barrier. Um, oh, cool. Okay. So we fall in Rapid City Heaven. And, and they're used, they're used by, are they driven by uh, 
providers or, or are they driven by a mixture of providers in VR? Anybody? No. We have contracts that have a, a position that is um, working with VR and they have a business uh, advice, I don't know, uh, business group there. Cool. They're established organizations. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, Michigan has a um, has a business engagement staff that they contract out with. It's still, I mean, it's still not as intimate as I think. Um, and I, I, I'll share some information about the, the other stuff, the the Rotary and the church effort and the the other things. Um, it's still kind of kind of big, you know, not um, not necessarily working on developing relationships uh, versus knowing where the jobs are. But cool. Okay. Um, well, thanks everybody uh, for, for joining us. So a lot of good information will be used for the next few um, training topics. The next training topic um, is on, on Tuesday and it's about understanding the role of VR counselors and VR services. Oh, that's, that's for, yeah, that's for you guys. That's for everybody, right? Not just, um, but any other questions or comments or anything? I'm available if, uh, If you anybody wants to hang on. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for your, your time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jordan.